Hello friends, how's it going? It's Josh Rose here. I want to try and give you a quick look at an explosive arrow build that uh, would make a good starter, I think, for Echoes of the Atlas. So let's get into it quickly. Farshot has been massively buffed and now gives you 30% more damage at maximum distance. So when enemies are at the edge of the screen, you're going to be hitting them for 30% more damage than a any Farshot character previously would. That's huge. And it does affect the explosion of explosive arrow now let's just talk about explosive arrow for a second uh, when you attack with explosive arrow you hit an enemy with an arrow and that attaches a fuse and that fuse has a duration when the duration expires the fuse explodes any arrows that are attached while an enemy already has a fuse on them do not add new explosions they actually just multiply that first explosion so the idea is to hit an enemy with a fuse and then get as many additional arrows stuck into them as possible before that initial fuse explodes and you get big multipliers for doing that okay so that's the idea now that's a pretty cool way to use occupying force you get two extra mirage archers so you can have three in total and you can all be attaching fuses to the enemy really ramping up the number of fuses you can get in an enemy. And just to show you simple math with 5.2 attacks per second, 1.6 fuse duration, the player can get eight and a half arrows in and the Mirage Archers can get 10 in. Of course, they have to be set up first. They can't be set up exactly next to each other, but they can be relatively close. So I think it's fairly uh, useful and sensible to Imagine you're going to set up a couple of Mirage Archers in a boss fight, and they're going to continue adding fuses for you and helping you get these bigger explosions. Should also be very good in the multi-boss arena thing with the Maven, the new Echoes of the Atlas multi-boss stuff that's going on, and for the new League, Ritual League, where you're basically uh, summoning a whole bunch of monsters to come and fight you at a singular point inside a circle. Have your three Mirage Archers down, and they're going to be shooting arrows everywhere, as are you. I think it's going to be a very good uh, type of build for this league. Now, I want to say something else about Farshot. Um, this is a great build to use the Kineticism uh, key, uh, Keystone, which comes from the Siege, which is a unique cluster jewel. These are not expensive. Nobody uses them. And you can't pierce, fork, or chain. You don't care about that because you don't want to do any of that with explosive arrow. You don't want the arrow to pierce or go through the target in any way. You want it to stop on them. Otherwise, you don't apply a fuse. So what we do get from this is 100% knockback chance. Every arrow we shoot will knock back enemies, assuming they're capable of being knocked back. And that's really good, of course, with far shots. So we're going to be hitting enemies with you know, seven, eight, ten arrows a second, and that's going to be constantly knocking them back off screen, keeping them away from us, which is great for defensive purposes, keep melee enemies completely off of you. And it also just kind of confuses enemies in this game. They sort of don't know what to do when they're getting knocked back. And uh, of course, that's also going to mean that you're able to do your full far shot damage with those very long shots. Now, another thing that also works well with that is arcing shots which means you get increased critical strike chance as your arrows travel further up to 100%. So similar in a way to far shot, it's just instead of flat damage, you're getting increased crit chance. And then of course you get some damage multiplication as well. Now these don't show up in Path of Building. We have two of them, but I have a flask here somewhere that basically gives us the full distance buff from arcing shots and you can see those two arcing shots nodes give us a lot of damage now one other thing on the knockback mechanic is i remember a couple of years ago people were trying to find ways to consistently knock back enemies with explosive arrow because if you can knock them into a wall or some sort of terrain object the arrows that don't hit the target will stick in the wall so if you use a dying sun for example you can hit the enemy with one arrow and the other two arrows will stick in a wall right behind them and those will explode after their duration. And so you can be hitting, uh, you can basically be shotgunning a bunch of explosions on an enemy. And it was never really very easy to knock back with explosive arrow before, but now you can do it on every single hit. So I think there are gonna be a lot of times where this is really valuable and they allow you to just overlap tons of explosions on the enemy and you're 
Mirage archers, if you have a dying sun, for example, will also shoot two additional arrows. So you'll have a whole bunch of little arrows exploding up against the enemy in addition to your normal single target damage. And I think that could be really valuable. I don't know if the Maven arena has walls or terrain objects. I'm not really sure if they'll stick at the edge of the arena, but on a lot of fights, it will be very useful. And I think the knockback will be very useful in that arena as well, because with your three Mirage Archers, if you have some sort of large melee enemies in that arena, they may just be able to, your Mirage Archers may just be able to keep those guys off of you by consistently knocking them back. So I think it, I think it's going to work very well in this league. Okay, so that's the kind of the central idea of the build. Arcing shots, far shot, mirage archers, knocking things back, keeping them off screen, having your little turret archers firing a bunch of extra arrows and building up 20 fuse explosions. And by the way, you can hit 20, I think I mentioned. This is 19, so awfully close. And uh, this is just a kind of simple short bow. You'll be able to get these six linked relatively easy in the league because there are divination cards that allow for a six link short bow so you could buy some of those cards and just do some harvest crafting on a bow and get some good attack speed on it and then throw whatever other damage on it you want now to get the 20 fuses on the enemy uh, requires a little bit of balancing so there's some different ways you can do it one way you can do it that helps a lot is to just grab a little duration now we path very close to some duration anyways there's some right here there's also some right here that will mean that your explosive arrow fuses last longer so these are 1.4 seconds currently but uh you can easily fix uh an inability to get enough arrows on them by boom you just grab one point and maybe that's enough takes you up to 1.5 and if you need to grab a couple more, you can to, to balance your attack speed against the fuse time to make sure you're getting up close to around those 20 arrows. Doesn't need to be exactly 20, but the more the better. And there's also duration here. You could use a duration support gem. I would suggest trying not to use any more than just this cluster here. So get your attack speed to the point where using this cluster will be enough. Now, I currently have Explosive Arrow has a 40% increased duration uh, um, on my helmet and an enchant, and that may not be easy to get. Really, this helmet is not particularly important, um, so you don't have to use a Star Conjas. So you just wanna see if you can get that enchant, if you can use, um, if you need to use these nodes over here, or if you need more attack speed. Um, this is not, the perfect attack speed bow. You could actually use the Tempest on this build. You could use Silver Bow, which will require a little more duration because it's a little bit slower. The Tempest has a little lower top end damage. So you just have to kind of balance. Uh, you can use a, a Wind Ripper, which also has pretty decent attack speed. Um, so you'll have to play around and, and see what bow you end up with, figure out which one you like and how fast you want to hit. But I do think a short bow is a very good way to start the league because you will be able to get a six link without spending a whole bunch of money. Um, let's talk about gale force real quick and gathering winds and all that stuff. So gathering winds is basically gives you tailwind, lets you generate gale force charges. And wind ward means you take 3% less damage per gale force and uh, you can get up to 10. I think this is pretty nutty. It's gonna give you 30% less damage taken when you're hit if you have full gale force. And unlike things like say, Wind Dancer, which is 20% less damage if you haven't been hit recently, this is this is 30% less damage if you have 30 charges. And you get it, I'm sorry, if you have 10 charges, you get a charge every time that you use a skill. So if you're attacking at five times a second, in two seconds, you'll be back to full Wind Ward, which means you could mitigate 30% of the damage you take every two seconds. Uh, or you know, mitigate the 30% of the damage of a single hit every two seconds. So we also want to use Wind Dancer, of course, for another 20%, and it gives us more evasion if we've been hit recently to give us an extra layer of defense so that we can build up more charges. But I think this thing is just pretty nutty. If you've played any like high evasion builds recently with some dodge, you have acro and phase acro, and you maybe used Kintsugi or something like that, or you use Wind Dancer, 
just these various sort of layers of dodge and evasion mechanics, they can be really strong. I played some characters last league. It just felt like they never got hit. So I'm expecting this Wind Ward node to be a very strong defensive node. So that's basically how our defenses work with this character. A very nice life pool with a Calm's Heart, a bunch of evasion, and uh, something that I haven't really talked about yet is blind, but we want to blind enemies as much as we possibly can. So we have 10% here on Dazzling Strikes. I think we have a, a jewel or two. There's 5% for 15. I don't know if we have any more, but I think 15 should be a pretty reliable number for uh, blinding enemies pretty consistently. Okay, we're almost done. Next thing I need to talk about is... Uh, Elemental Equilibrium and the new Trinity support. So Elemental Equilibrium, the way it works is you want to hit an enemy with one element and it will gain resistances to that element but lose resistances to the other two elements. So we want to hit an enemy with, say, cold or lightning damage with our arrows because we don't care about the damage of our arrows. They do nothing anyways. And that will reduce their fire resistance so when the explosion happens, they have lowered fire res. So if we just look at explosive arrow, we can look at our arrows themselves and see that they do some cold damage, but they don't do any fire damage. If they do fire damage, they will increase enemies fire resist. So if we just want to do cold or lightning. That's easily done by just getting a little cold to attacks or lightning to attacks somewhere on your gear, and then you're good to go. Okay, so we're hitting with cold, and it's the highest damage hit that happens with our arrows. And then the highest damage that happens with our explosion is fire. That means the Trinity support gem works perfectly. You need to hit with the highest type of damage for two different elements on two different hits. And that's kind of hard to do. So some people are going to play like elemental hit, which rotates elements, or there are certain weapons that will do that for you. In this build, you don't even need to think about it. You get the, you get the affinity or resonance or whatever it's called built up in Trinity automatically just by playing. And basically all that means is you get this, you get tons of elemental damage, penetration and attack speed just by throwing the gem. in. so it's, it's a huge multiplier. You can see it's 73% more damage, but it also is an attack speed multiplier that we're not seeing the effect of in the DPS numbers. So it's perfect. It's totally overpowered. And it's meant to be like used in weird kind of hard to use builds. But in this build, it's super easy to use. Don't even need to think about it. So that's what this flask is. And uh, once the Trinity support gem is in here, I'll be able to update the POV, but it's not yet. And that's why we're looking at a five link. Okay, so I think we've covered most of it. Let me just look and see if there's anything else we need to talk about really. Um, I haven't put a huge amount of time thinking about all the skills and stuff, but basically you're probably going to want to run Grace because not getting hit is just a very big deal in this build. We run Precision and Skitter Bots for some extra damage. We have an Enlighten in here. You don't even have to run that. You can run a lower level Precision. We have an Assassin's Mark that we can self-cast, a Scorching Ray to lower elemental resists. We have Frenzy to gain Frenzy Charges and Dash to move around. So that's what I've thought of so far. The rest of the uh, jewels, um, we have Peak Vigor here for some extra life. Spike Concoction helps our flasks if you want to use that. We've got a Fettle right there. The rest of this skill tree is damage and life, pretty much. So I think that about covers it. And uh, if you end up trying this build, let me know. Let me know how it goes. If you have a good time, if it feels good, if you have any suggestions on how we might change it. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, I plan on making more videos, and more build guides in the future. So check back soon. See you later.